You know, I find myself sitting here praying and thinking. This morning when I woke up at 3.45, I laid there and preached the whole sermon in my head. I'm a full-fledged believer that if the Lord's got something to say, he's going to put it on your heart. I was just sitting here and I was praying, Lord, you know, Help me remember what it was that you wanted me to say today. And as I sit here thinking about it, I suddenly realized that, you know, I'm one of the ones that says that, you know, if you don't know what God's trying to tell you, He's trying to get across and, you know, go back to praying. And so I went into praying and I asked him, you know, what is it that you want me to talk about this morning? And suddenly it popped into my head. You know, everybody's like, trying to get to heaven in whatever form it may be. A lot of what's been going on in my mind and in my world is I'm looking around at all these people who's trying to get to heaven and who is, you know, pastors, preachers, everybody in the church is trying to get to heaven, but no one's getting there. I don't know if this comment of the Bible is exactly what I think it is, but I'm pretty sure that at one point in time, everybody got together and decided to build something called Jacob ladder I may be right and I could be wrong on the name of it but I remember a story in the Bible about people getting together and building a ladder trying to get to heaven well when God seen this he was like oh no this this cannot be so he broke the ladder down and he decided to divide people, giving them different train of thought so that, you know, he individualized us, which, you know, we got uh, whites, blacks, we got Irish, we've got Puerto Ricans, we got Mexicans, we got Cubans, we've got Africans. You know, so he divides us into different categories. And so, well, as time passed it on, they tried it again. So because we all talked the same language, and we all knew what we were doing, in the Bible it talks about how the Holy Spirit come into the church where the men was at. And when the Holy Spirit came in, it brought the new tongues. However, the new tongues may be something you may not understand or know, but does not make it any less known. He gave each category of humans of this group the gift of tongues. Some people says it's language. Some people says it's the Holy Spirit. Some people says that they don't believe in tongues. Some people says whatever. 
So as we proceed down this trail, I got praying about it one day, and I didn't know what tongues was, and the Lord gave them to me, and I've been laid out in the spirit, and I speak in tongues. I not only can I speak it, but I can interpret it. I can prophesy. I can tell people what they said, and I can explain it to them the way that it came out to where they can understand how what they said attaches to their life and me not know who they are or know anything about their life. It is such an amazing gift to have the ability to pray for someone you've never met before and in prayer be able to answer questions and thoughts and doubts about the Lord and be able to give them comfort to know that even someone like me, God can use to help you see him more clearly, which makes a lot of sense to do with my weirdness. And trust me, I'm weird. And it leads me up to preachers and pastors and teachers who's got to grab the Bible or their tablet or their phone or their notepads to find the subject or whatever it was that they studied on. If you really truly believe in the Lord and you are 110% all about God, then you don't need all them gadgets and gadgets and pieces of paper. You won't even need that Bible. All you need is to have the power of Jesus in you and the Holy Spirit. And the moment you open your mouth, God will fill it and you will not have no doubt on the abilities that you can do. Because not only will he put the words in your mouth, he will say them for you when you have to think twice about it. Because he will have you covered and anointed in the power of Jesus. Instead of standing up there for 20 minutes trying to find something that you studied on all night long just to have him come up Show off, show out, and it's glorious way. So, if you're on the stage, just clearly to be seen, heard, and acknowledged that you are doing what your due diligence is, then get off the stage, children. We got enough actors and and dancing chickens out there. We don't need no more. We need people that's on fire for the Lord. He needs warriors, not actors. He needs fighters, not seat warmers. 5,000 seats in your church, and yet your congregation's 150, maybe 500 people. Where Where's your workers at? You got to be out in the field laying seed. You got to be out gathering souls, grabbing people, filling the seats in the church. You can't just open a door and have a picnic and then expect people to come and want to stay. Why would anybody want to go to the church and sit there? And be nice. Somebody come up and be nice to them that day. Two weeks later, they run into them in a restaurant. Just as salty as you can get over it. 